research indicates aviation is contributing to more um, radiative forcing than so far assumed. Oil prices. Once again, everybody assumes uh, it's fine. Just continue business as usual. More growth in tourist volumes. But think about what's happened just one year ago. So how do you want to manage a tourism system if flying becomes ever more important um, or in, in your uh, tourism volume growth approach and at the same time more expensive? Then the EU ETS. Uh, so far, Australia is going to have an emission trading scheme. Um, so far, uh, the price level set will not have an impact on aviation. Uh, see, if you would fly down here from Europe, uh, the cost would be on a return flight about 60 euros. Given the total cost of maybe 1,400 or something, I don't think anybody would make that um, a major argument to not come here. But in the future, that might change. Uh, look at customer attitudes. More and more people think that something should be done about emissions from air, uh, aviation. So public support is growing for a strong climate policy with regard to uh, mobility. Um, then I found this story in The Guardian recently about short break long haul travel. It's like if you fly from the UK for a three day trip to South Africa. <coughs> Breakneck <coughs> breaks. You see, the environment isn't a paramount issue when you're chained to your desk for 14 hours a day, single, and earning over $400,000 a year. How long before Spam and Rhino installs a fully functioning lap dancing club in the upper deck of the aircraft so that the gas guzzling yuppies can jiggle while the planet burns? Um, tells you about something that might be coming up in the future, uh, climate justice. Because essentially, we have to understand that looking at tourism, I told you already, Tourism is just 5% of global emissions. But if you look at national levels, because this is a global picture, if you look at Australia or Sweden, uh, in Sweden, for instance, tourism is accounting for 11% of national emissions. In Australia, well, depends on, on the framework chosen, might be something between 5 and 10%. But essentially, this gives you a different understanding of the role of tourism uh, than the global picture. And then finally, look at the per capita level. Frequent flyers usually easily emit 50 tons per year. And that you can see in comparison to global average emissions of just 4.3 tons per year. So with a climate justice perspective coming up, those people that cause a lot of emissions, which is really a very small proportion of humanity, might be more in trouble in the future uh, than others because there might be emerging discourses of some people contributing uh, over proportionally to climate change. Um, so what are the key conclusions here? Um, first of all, in tourism we don't want a plus two degrees Celsius world. Major climate change will be negative for tourism. Moderate climate change might also imply a lot of opportunities. Maybe not so much for Australia, but for other destinations. But basically you don't want strong glo uh, global warming. Tourism is a significant contributor to climate change. Its share in global emissions is growing rapidly. Uh, technology will not solve the problem. It will contribute to solving the problem, but it will not solve the problem. And in conclusion then, we probably have to radically rethink our tourism uh, models and uh, think about totally different approaches to tourism in the future. It's not just you know, saving a little bit by getting rid of the standby function at the TV set. It's about more radical change than that. Um, essentially, I think there's five major issues that we have to look at in terms of the structural change needed. <coughs> we need people to stay longer. There's a global trend of doing more trips, more distant for shorter periods. I think that trend has to be broken, and that's where marketing comes in and becomes very important. We have to find strategies to make people stay longer and then also to spend more money. I'll be coming back to that. We need to move from distant to closer destinations and markets. For Australia, that might mean that you want to attract a higher share of, for instance, Chinese tourists in the future rather than Germans. Um, we have to move from high energy to low energy transport. Obviously, for Australia, it's not so much an issue. But in terms of domestic travel, uh, there might be uh, a need to reconsider you know, the way we travel. I mean, in Europe. 
We're talking now about 4,000 kilometers that you might cover by high-speed rail systems in the future as an option to, uh, or, or as an option not to fly. From wrong spending to right spending, what I mean here is that you spend money on goods with a higher eco-efficiency. That means the same amount of money for goods that have a lower emissions factor. If you buy a bottle of wine in Europe and bring it back to, Europe, to, to Australia, that has a high carbon footprint. If you spend the money here on a local restaurant that has a far greater impact on the local economy, positive impact, while at the same time reducing emissions. I mean, Australia has a problem with outbound tourism that is growing, and it's a, it's a major leakage for, for the national economy. So that's something that could be considered here. And then also for airlines, the, the, the business model of the past might have to be changed. The business model of the past has been volume growth at declining profits. And I think we have to move away from that again. So Australia has been a champion in uh, sustainable tourism. And uh, that might even be the case for uh, climate change sustainability agenda in the future. I could imagine. Uh, I was very happy when I saw that, that actually Australia proposed to bypass ICAO, because essentially ICAO hasn't done anything in the past 10 years uh, with regard to emissions, even though they have been in charge of that. And um, I would very happily see more developments coming out of Australia that help to support restructuring the tourism industry towards a climatic, uh, climatically sustainable tourism. Thank you. Thank you.